everyone, Miguel Hito of your Cranial Emissions Show here. Getting dialed into the show on the interweb and social media, it's a piece of cake. Here's a few ways you can do it. First and foremost, our home base is Spreaker.com. Search the Cranial Emissions Show. And on iPhone and Android markets, download the Spreaker app and listen to live or to archive shows right on your phone or tablet. Next, visit our Facebook page under the Cranial Emissions Network and Twitter at Cranial E, YouTube, the Cranial Emissions Show underscore official. And you can even email us with your questions and comments at the Cranial Emissions Show at gmail.com. If you want to be part of the show, you can call in on Friday nights between 7 and 9 Eastern Standard Time at 813-438-6068. Thanks for listening and being part of the growing revolution that is the Cranial Emissions Show. Hello, this is Sancho from the Cranial Emission Show. Our celebrity voices are impersonated by Ben, Caleb, Joe, Jesus, or Miggy. Yes, we keep adding people every time. Broadcasting from within the Ebor Muta Triangle, live from the Lion's Den at 1704 and a half, yes, a half, East 7th Avenue, Ebor City, Florida, it's the Cranial Emission Show. Ben Charles, Caleb Crispy, and Miguel Hito. Ah, welcome to another edition, folks, of the Cranial Mission Show. Tardy, like we are wont to do here. Broadcasting live from the Lion's Den. It's been a, a brief uh, respite from the Lion's Den, Miggy. It's been two weeks since we've been here last. Yeah. We were doing ESB two weeks in a row, but we will be doing the Lion's Den here tonight and again next week. Oh, next week too? Yeah, here okay. in the Ebor Muta Triangle. It's only fair. Of course, we've got to balance it out. If you want to be a part of the show, you want to call in, you can do so. 813-438-6068. If you're a fan mm. of the show or if you're just listening now, go to craniomissions.com, the new website that's out. A lot going on there, updating frequently with a lot of links to all of our participants within the show. So we're excited about that. The launch of that site has gotten a lot of fanfare. That's been great. A lot going on over the last week or two. We were blessed last week to be joined by the great John Wilson, who is here uh, across the pond. He has traveled from Liverpool. I understand, Miggy, he's been staying at your house, and he joined us last week on the show. Folks that are listening now, go back and listen to the archive on that one. That was a great show. God Save John Wilson was the name of the show. It was a lot of fun. And he is, uh, I understand, performing live tonight, doing some comedy, right? Yeah, some stand-up got, comedy? He's got two sets tonight at Snapper's Comedy Grill. He's got the early show and then the, the either the mid or late show. Uh, he's got about five to seven minutes. He did a really good job, man. I mean, he, he had a couple of references which need to be adjusted for this next show, but... Uh, and there was about forty-five people. It wasn't a lot, but this uh, there's I mean there's a party of just sixty tonight in the first show, so he should have a hell of a lot of people there. Oh, cool. um, but he used he, he talked about stepping in. Do- he said dog muck, so people weren't you know they were they kind of tilted their heads like you know when you talk to a dog. So he's going to adjust that tonight and then add a couple little fun stories in there. But he did a damn good job. So he's going to get a little filthier tonight. Uh, not filthier. He's just going to change the lingo so Americans can understand it. Well, you know, he did go with a monosyllabic word. I, I advised him of that prior to traveling <laughs> over here. Yeah, but muck is probably not the, you know, not, how, how many Americans do you see use muck on a regular basis? But uh, he, he, he did a hell of a job. I mean, uh, everybody was giving him high fives, and uh, people were, I mean, he stole the show. It was great. Now, since he's been here, I know you've shown him, you and, and, and your lovely girlfriend, Sherry, have shown him quite a bit of hospitality. You've been engaging in different uh, activities here around Tampa right. that he's unfamiliar with. I saw where you took him to Bush Gardens recently, and that he seemed to enjoy that quite a bit. That was a big hit. Oh, for we him. took him on Shikri, damn near shit his pants. It <laughs> <laughs> was really funny. But I mean, I tell you, we were on that Shikri ride, which was crazy. It was started raining like uh, throughout the day, and we, we we literally got to the last person in line before the cheetah hunt ride, and they closed the ride down because there was lightning nearby. 
So oh. we sat there for like an hour and then had to, you know, had to get on. We were just, you know, we were like, ah, oh, screw it, because they closed it twice. And then we went on Shikra, and it was raining, but no lightning. So when you went down and you were going 60 miles an hour, that rain in your eyeballs <laughs> felt like your eyes were getting freaking tattooed. Oh, so I have been there forever. I, I, I pretty much had to close my eyes the whole time uh, to avoid getting water damage <laughs> my freaking eye holes. When we found out that when, when – John got picked up from the airport. We found out that Lou Bob Jenkins, a contributor to the show, who oh. was supposed to pick him up last week, in fact, failed on his mission. Instead of picking up John from the airport in Orlando, he, for some reason, thought he was supposed to go to England and then escort him from England. 50 bucks he did that on purpose. Across the pond. <laughs> oh, yeah. 50 bucks he did that oh, on yeah. purpose. Well, and he, as of last week, his, his backup plan was to lodge at John's house while John was here. So we are expecting a call at some point tonight from Lou Bob to get an update on whether he's back home, whether he's still over there. I've got my money on the fact that he's still squatting at John's house. We warned him about this. I wouldn't doubt it. We'll find out whether that's going on or not, what the current situation is there. I know he's got another installment of his proud moment in redneck history, which he's you know, quite, uh, well, quite proud of. Don't forget, we were on the Double Special show last week also, guys. So if you go to DoubleSpecial.com, you can check out uh, John and I on the Double Special show with Chris Gorgeous, JB Lee, Jordan Lee, of course, and Tiffany Barbie. Uh, uh, Chris and and Tiffany are both active comics. Chris is now a full-time professional comic, so we wish them uh, the best on that one. So a lot of cross-promotion going on with all these different shows. A big thank you to Gav Cross and to Aaron Blanchard, both of whom called in last week. Gav? Was it Gavin? No, was who was the other one that called him besides? No, it was Aaron? Mike. It was uh, oh, <coughs> President Obama. I'm sorry, you're right. Gav, Gav did not call. <laughs> in. Gav didn't call in, but Gav did a lot of sharing because it's it's really late when uh, you know when uh, when 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 they're doing the thing over there. So yeah. you know, but Gav has been promoting the heck out of it. Uh, he's a big fan of John. So uh, it, you know, give big big ups to uh, Funny Looking Live on Spreaker. Check that guy out. He's really really funny. A lot of good friends here through the Spreaker the Spreaker uh, Union that oh, we've yeah. established. Here. I almost forgot we are starting that campaign. Pod Tsunami. Don't forget hashtag Pod Tsunami. Uh, whenever you mention our show, share our show, hashtag Pod Tsunami. Tsunami along with that. Well, guys, we're going to start this show off the way we do every single week, and that is with the beer call. Hey, all right, a little fly me to the moon. Little blue eyes, old blue eyes, buddy. We're going to Frank Sinatra fly me to the moon. You went a little slow on that. I did. Yeah, that's bad. Before, it sounded like you did like a slow down mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I bought a Frank Sinatra <laughs> tape from, <laughs> like a, from like an ice cream <laughs> truck from, in from the uh, ghetto. DJ Paul Wall, he did those screwed and chopped CDs for the longest time. Remember no, that? I, I yeah. got it from an ice cream truck in the ghetto, is what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the uh, beer tonight, Caleb? You're the one that brought the uh, great beer in for the beer call. Say it right. Tangier? Mm, I th- <laughs> Tangier. Gonna, I would go with Tangier. Yeah, Tangier. Oh, it's the it, Southern Tier Tangier. Yeah. It's an IPA brewed with uh, tangerine peel. Yeah, it's a really nice session IPA. Uh, this is this is a damn good beer, man. It's got a nice, smooth flavor. Does. What do we got for uh, ABV? Hey, 4.6 ABV. That is definitely session. Southern Perfect. Tier, which is a brewery out of upstate New York. It's actually the great Jesus Julio's favorite brewery. Yep. And I would argue, I don't think it is called Tangier, since it is an orange yeah, but tasting Southern beer. Tier. I think it's supposed to be tangier. Mm, Southern tier tangier. Come on. <laughs> no, like like tang. Yeah, I get it's supposed it. Yeah. To be tangier. Come on. Like tang Do you really yeah. think? I don't think so. Dude. Why I would they? Na- why would they give it an African name reference when it's a tangerine beer? <laughs> why would they say Southern tier tangier beer? <laughs> it's a pretty freaking tangy beer, Maggie. I, I got that, but uh, all right. Uh, well, all right. We're gonna have to go online. We're we're gonna we're gonna agree to disagree on this one because. I think it's Tangier. We got to derive the phonetic no, hold on. reference of this. <laughs> the name was first used for the fruit coming from Tangier, Morocco. Oh, suck it, Ben! <laughs> suck it, bro! Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> All right, we are starting off this show with good vibes, baby. I stand corrected. All right, <laughs> All right let's go ahead and get into some stories here. Woo! We, we uh, are already getting a little long-winded with the beer call. I don't which care. Is I'm not happy. Unusual, now. But <laughs> you're happy it's not you're unusual right. to be wrong by Miggy. <laughs> <laughs> there goes singing. Miggy there T. Goes. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was well placed. Well, I meant to make say Miggy T. I just said Miggy, and it just kind of did it and I killed it. Lake Worth, Florida. 
Chicken and beer make for bad burglary. A family Florida, uh, Florida family said that they came home to this dude uh, passed out in their kitchen with chicken bones and empty beer bottles scattered all over the place. Was his name Lou Bob? He was not Lou Bob, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so they told, the cops said they found the 22-year-old Jacob Miller still asleep uh, when they responded. And this guy was absolutely wasted. But like I said, he was surrounded by chicken and beer. This, this guy looks very... He doesn't even look 22. I mean, this guy looks like 17. Oh, yeah. He looks young. I, the question I have is... Did he mean to break in and, and steal something, or was, was he just looking for some food and a place to crash? I don't know. I mean, he had an open he had an uh, uh, open warrant for burglary in Texas, so I'm oh, guessing well, yeah. I'm guessing that the uh, the fact of that he was <laughs> it's going not to his first, first rodeo. Nah, it's definitely not his first rodeo. But the, I mean, you got a guy like that getting in the house. I mean, we've had so many freaking stories about people breaking in somewhere. Remember that guy that broke into that one salon, broke through the wall just to get at some like what was it? Some uh, hot pockets. Hot pockets. Yeah, yeah man. Wow. <laughs> no, and then we had another story where the guy broke in, made a baked potato or something. Made oh. a baked potato. <laughs> Then yeah, tried to. Then he up. raked the leaves. Raked the leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, raked then, he, the then he raked the leaves. Then we had another story where the guy broke in, and it was only because he wanted the owner of the house to smoke pot with him. That was only like a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's I, yeah, I was out yeah, for that that's one. right. So there's a lot <laughs> of these stories going on where <laughs> you know people break in for random reasons, but it's now did that guy did he bring his own pot? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like he broke in and saying, "Hey, dude, do you have any pot? Can hey, we man. smoke it?" Yeah, no, he, he, oh, he brought it with he, him. He actually brought. What yeah, a nice no, guy. no. He I didn't I break remember. in. He didn't break in. He was like, "Yo, you holding?" No, he wasn't doing that. <laughs> Freaking mooch. Yeah, no. He broke in and he just he just wanted a partner in crime. <laughs> you know what? I, I got to give that guy respect. At least he, you know, so you got to bring your own. You can't just like mooch off everybody every time you want some weed. That's no fun to smoke alone. You know, no. you want somebody to hang out with and gab with. But sometimes you got to break into someone's house to find that. That's I guess true. The guy has no friends. I don't know. <laughs> Oh. Now, speaking of friends, we got the hey. great Jesus Julio. Jesus Julio here. and the Reverend Joey T in the house. We did recently post two beautiful Reverend Joey T segments: the uh, "How to Get Some" segment and the uh, the interesting scenario segment. So those are online now. Check them out. Looks like a new Buckeye hat for Jesus Julio. Probably. No. Yeah. There's, le- there's leaves on it. Marijuana leaves. <laughs> on it. <laughs> well, while we're talking about beer stories, we're talking about a drunk guy on that occasion. But this drinking beer in this story. Is for a good occasion. We're, we're talking about a man that's actually drinking beer in every state for cancer research. And recently, he just visited the state of Maine. He raises a glass and raises money in the process. The guy is named Todd Roger. He's taking this cause across the nation to bars. He's calling it a poor tour. And <laughs> in, in 2013, this guy decided to drink a beer in all 352 Massachusetts towns and cities. He said he raised about fifty grand in the process. So in 2014, he did the same thing in Connecticut, raised about 55 k Now he's taking it nationwide. That's pretty awesome. That is cool. But who's it? Well, all right, what, what cancer foundation he's going to give the money to? Because there's some out there, which I won't name. You, you can go on that one list. There's a place online you could find the percentage of all these places that give money back, like uh, the ALS Foundation. Didn't quite give as much money back on that whole uh, pouring ice over every body thing. Yeah. So um, go online and check that well, out. Well, that actually yourself. has not been confirmed yet. It was set up front that there was doubt that they would, but their revenue was so low. They raised so much more money during that event that we haven't seen what they did with that money yet. Okay, so, but there's that one site. Yeah. Research it yourselves. There's a place Yeah, there's to go a couple online. different ones, um, yeah. different um, nonprofit uh non watchdog websites. Yeah, there's, much yeah. Kind of so go and let's check those out on your own. Well, the thing you have to realize with some of those two, though, is some of the ones that we will not mention, it, it, the, the horrible thing about those is they are not cancer research. Um, uh, organizations you like Susan G. Komen and stuff like I that. I wasn't going to say that, but their oh, their mission is <laughs> is awareness. So all the money they spend back is in advertising, right? Because they're making people aware. Which I, you know, hey, I I can't fault them for doing it if that's what they say their mission is and that's what they're going to do. Well, they don't give any. They don't give much money to research because that's not who they are. But I do think that's kind of messed yeah, up. I mean, their mission statement is fulfilled. I mean, that's pretty yeah. much what we're saying here right now. Yeah, but it's just not uh, not what most people think. Most people assume they're going to give that money back to research, and they don't. They give it out back to advertising. Now, in this story, they don't actually mention uh, the, the particular charity, but he does say that he's met a lot of cancer patients and survivors along the way. He's bringing awareness. These people join him to have a beer. He says that Maine is his 27th state since he's begun this campaign. He's trying to raise about 100 grand this year. And oh, actually, I'm sorry. It does say he's giving the money to hospitals around the country that treat cancer patients. That's excellent. That's awesome. So in, in this case, it is actually going to the right source. Yeah, we are absolutely. pleased to be joined, by the way, by the Reverend Joey T. What's he, up, fellas? He needs headphones oh. up, but 
I and need, mic down. I would like his <laughs> name. I want to try to contact right. him, and maybe we can get him I on the show. Can't hear